technical difficulties. You hear that all the time nowadays in Zoom rooms and FaceTiming and everything. So we finally got it figured out. We're doing a new thing this morning. We're in the center with a very tiny group of folks. Just Heather doing her thing, Aiden holding a high watch, Jimmy's behind the camera, and I'm going to give you some music. So we're going to start with just a little on a clear day you can see forever. regular service so all know that up front and but we will begin with the lighting the flames of faith a call to service we perform this ceremony to promote the universal consciousness of life which acknowledges that all peoples and all faiths all sentient beings come from the one great universal principle which we call spirit Fundamental to this truth is the unifying nature of all religious thought and experience which we honor here today. We light the candle for the Tao, honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium, the natural way. We light the candle for the shamanic traditions, honoring our beliefs and practices of all indigenous peoples the way of primal spirituality. We light the candle of Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. We light the candle for Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. We light the candle for all forms of Buddhism, honoring the four noble truths and the path of compassion. We light the candle for all forms of Christianity, honoring the Christ consciousness as the path of love. We light the candle for all forms of Islam, honoring the path of compliance with the will of God as the highest calling. We light the candle for the universalistic religion of Baha'i, honoring the path of unity and peace. We light the candle for all forms of new thought, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. And as practitioner Aiden Greeny lights the last candle, let it represent the path that brought you here this morning. And now if you just join me in prayer. This is what I know is true. I know that there is only one, one power, one presence, one life. And this one that is first cause to all creation is that mighty moving force of life itself. It is the thing that is within each one of us. It is the heart that is 
whispering to us, sometimes shouting to us. And it is the soul that is greater than any of us could ever imagine. And yet, there it is. What I know is that this time together unfolds in such beauty, such order, such harmony, that we are all blessed and a blessing. I'm so very grateful for knowing what I know. I'm grateful for this time together. I'm grateful for this community, the visible ones and the invisible ones. And I'm, in, I'm so grateful for the givingness of spirit as service by our beloved. So with my heart filled with gratitude, I release this word to the action of law. It is complete, and so it is. So as I told you at the beginning, it won't be a regular service. I want to do a little meditation, and Diane has a song, it's original composition, that is exactly what I want all of us to experience before we go into the meditation. To, so make yourselves comfortable and receptive, and be willing to feel whatever feelings come forth as Diane sings her composition, The Voice of God. Thank you. 
invitation to be led home, to be led to the awareness of the power and presence that is within each one of us. The word home is so evocative, and especially since we are in our spiritual home building. But we've never been away from home, for home is where we are. And this morning, it's all about listening to that voice for God. So now, in the, as you let your body more fully relax, notice where the feelings were, where, the, where your body felt what it felt while Diane was singing. Just notice and let it be okay. All of those feelings allow us to be human. on that still place within you. The heart of your heart, the cave of your heart, some religions say, and just in the silence for a few minutes, let's experience Diane's song. Listen for the voice of God within you. Thank you. 
Let the sound of the bell bring you back to the awareness of where you are in your body. Come back into the awareness of your body and be so aware of that voice of God that has been within you. And I think we're singing now. Aren't we? Yes, you're going to join me. I think you all remember this song called I Send My Love. I send my love over the mountains. I send my love over the sea. I send my love into the heavens, and it returns to me. What a good way to send off love and get it to come back to us. So we're going to sing it just a couple times in a row, keeping that sweet, meditative feeling that you've had going on, and just turning it into a chant.
So now, oops. And so now, time for the Declaration of Principles. I believe in God, the one creative intelligence, operating through the universe and operating throughout my entire being, now and always. I believe this perfect spirit operates upon a law of mind and creates my experience exactly according to my belief. I believe this creative intelligence can be used by me and by every other person to produce health, abundance and love in mind, body and total life experience. I use it now and I rejoice in it and so it is. Now for our affirmation. Today I permit the power that is the, today I permit the power greater than I am to flow into the newness of life through every thought and action. I listen to my heart with perfect understanding that divine spirit guides and guards me. I accept my place at the table for I am one with the one. Thank you, Aiden. All right, everyone, it's time for you to join me again. I know you this song because this usually brings in children. So all the children that may be hanging around in your house, they're welcome to come in and party with us right now. We're going to do a little Life of Mine. lightly. So for all, us all to recognize that we're doing the best we can and sometimes there will be mistakes. This morning, you know I've told you about my kittens, this morning I had this wonderful experience. My shy cat came and rolled around my feet, purring. Now yeah, he was out after something. He really wanted something, but he was rubbing my legs and my ankles, and just in such ecstasy, it reminded me of this quote by Kafka, and I actually thought the word was roiled, but I looked up the quote and it's rolled. And Kafka said this, you do not need to leave your room. 
pretty, pretty good for us to go right now. You do not need to leave your room. Remain sitting at your table and listen. Do not even listen. Simply wait. Be quiet, still, and solitary. The world will freely offer itself to you to be unmasked. The world will offer itself to you to be unmasked. It has no choice. It will roll in ecstasy at your feet. Kafka. It will roll in ecstasy at your feet. The, the theme for this month is listening to your heart. And today's message is the seat of the soul. And of course, that immediately thought of, I immediately thought of Gary Zukoff's book by the same name. And I um, binged on a few Oprah sessions with he, with, Go, uh, with Gary. It, he is really clear that as long as we are coming from any kind of ego, we are not listening to our heart. The soul isn't guiding us. So his thought is simply that the soul, the soul, is the expression of the divine, of spirit within us. And those of you who are students know that we in Science of Mind think of that the soul is the law. It is the law. It is the law. It is always operating in absolutely immaculate order. And it, where does it come from? It comes from the spirit, the spirit that is guiding each one of us. Gary Zukoff said when he was first on Oprah's show, he explained it. Oprah said that she has used this for years, and it's nowhere in Gary's writings. He made it up on the spot as he was being interviewed by Oprah. And that is the soul is like a mothership. So think of a mothership, and you're you're part of this um, part of this navy or this this these groups of boats, and your whole purpose is to stay under the protection in the area of your guide, the mothership. The mothership is your soul. It is eternal. It always has been. It always will be, even when you're in a different form. Even when you let go of this physical body, it is. It is. That's the seed of the soul. That eternal something that forever sings and sings. So this time, as we've been going through our stay-at-home orders and our social distancing, many of us have experienced deep pain, loneliness, anger, frustration, jealousy. Um, Gary Zukoff explains that when he was a younger man, he was all into that. He was actually a Green Beret, and he said, I became a soldier so that I could be admired, which is totally not of the soul, it's of the ego. I became whatever else he did in his life. It was all he said he was a sex addict, so what we know is all addictions come from a false belief that there's something outside of ourselves that would satisfy that yearning, and nothing will satisfy that yearning but the God within. The presence within, that is your mothership, that is the soul. He told of a story, um, it, Oprah told of a story that in that original interview, she had a young couple come on, and they had, they had, had um, given birth, the mom had given birth to twins, and four days after his birth, one of the boys passed away. And she was in deep grief, as was her husband. And this was, I think, not months, but years, but it was a time after his death. And Gary Zukoff said, and quite rightly, what you're doing is every time your son, who is a living, does something as a milestone, you think of your other son, Ryan, who died. 
And what you don't understand is that every one of us has a contract. We decide. It's a decision, not conscious. It's a soul decision how long we stay on this planet. So Ryan came, gave his gifts, and you haven't let him go. You haven't trusted that great spirit, the his own soul. And yet, as they were telling the story, everyone in the audience was a huge audience, was weeping. Their hearts opened for the pain of this young couple. And Oprah pointed out, and Gary too, see how alive he is? Right here, right now, you can feel his presence in this room. You can feel his presence. We know that. We've all experienced that. Um, Gary, Oprah asked Gary, she said, she said, have you always known this? And he said, yes, but I haven't always acted as if I knew it. He said when he was a young boy, his, um, his grandmother passed. And as was the custom, his family, who was Jewish, went off into the alcove to the side, and the rabbi was speaking to them on a closed circuit TV. And for some reason, he as a child just thought this was very funny to hear the rabbi from a tele television, small television. And he started to giggle and he felt his hand being jerked down. He didn't do it. He said, I know that was granny. And she wanted to hear what the rabbi was saying. And she couldn't be bothered by my giggling. He was certain of it. He said he didn't tell his parents or anyone else for years and years. But every time he would think back to that moment, he felt her presence. He felt her energy. He felt her there. This thing that we are is greater than any of our circumstances. It's definitely greater than COVID-19. It's definitely greater than any of our any of our politics or policies it's greater than all and it's eternal our souls will be wherever they are in the eternality of life no matter what's happened with our bodies and we make it so much easier on ourselves when we quit trying to be filled up from out there from someone's um, from someone's approval someone's love a little drink of this a little smoke of that a little chat 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 all of the things that just keep us from listening as Kafka said you don't even you just be still be quiet and the universe will roll at your feet God will roll at your feet. Your soul will roll at your feet if you're quiet, if you listen. So I found um, in my 1953 May Science of Mind magazine uh, four little teaching stories that I want to share with you. And I wasn't sure of the pronunciation, so of course I asked our wonderful Diane and she knew more about them, so I'm going to pass over to Diane. Tell us the name of the first one and what it is. So this little chapter is called Symphonie Pathétique, which is, as you know, a French word um, with empathy. So the first little story, and these are set up like movements on a piece of music. So in music, usually all the tempo markings are written in Italian. So the first tempo, if you will, is doloroso assai which means sad enough. <laughs> and the story is sad enough. The story is a man was dying of starvation. A wanderer happening by came into his hovel. I'm starving, said the man. But why, when you have gold? Gold? Not I, I'm a poor man. I've always been poor. Gold is for the rich. No, gold, but your, your shelves are laden with money chests, and the, and the a stranger dragged out one of them, opened it, and there it was, packed with gold. The man says, but I didn't know. You didn't look. Oh, others too have come and told me to look. 
but I didn't believe it, and I'm not sure that it is there now, he said. And he died of starvation. And the next story, Diane. So the second movement is Meno Triste Manantropo. So it's even, it says, less sad, but not too much. <laughs> the second one says there was a man who lived in one room. Who lived in one room. One day, a stranger called. The man showed the stranger his house. First, the room where he lived, and which was dark and had nothing in it. Then he opened a door, and the stranger looked into the other room, more beautiful than anything he'd ever seen, anything he'd ever dreamed of. Though his travels had been many places, seen many palaces of the world, it was adorned with art and radiant with light, and the tables were piled with gold. The stranger exclaimed, but I thought you were a poor man, when instead you must have in this room all the wealth of the kingdom. Why do you not live in this rich room? Why do you live instead in a poor room that is dark and empty and spend only a single copper? I cannot in live in the rich room, the man said. I am a poor man. Taking us to story number three. Number three is called scherzo, which means a joke or happy, and then allegro e poi non tanto. So it's a joke, and it's kind of fast, but not too much. <laughs> and this one is, one day a wanderer paused to watch a young man standing on the corner, giving away purses of gold. The young man is rich, reflected the stranger, very rich. Whenever he was given away a, bas a basket full of purses, a servant brought him another great basket. He had given away a dozen baskets full when I have been watching him, and yet his face is sad. Why are you sad when you are rich? The stranger asked the young man. Because I should like to give, the young man answered. The stranger said, but you've been giving continuously, a purse to everyone who passed. The young man shook his head. I inherited it, he said. Story number four, Diane. This is called Adagio Lamentoso, which means slowly lamentingly. One day, a passerby stopped in a hut. The middle of the floor sat a man clothed in rags. There was an open chest in the room filled with princely garments. Why do you not put on one of those robes, says the passerby. Or are perhaps they not fine enough? Fine enough? Oh, on the contrary, they're way too fine for me. But you are the son of a king. Indeed, no, you are mistaken. My father ruled no lands. Your father is a maker of lands, of the kings themselves and of all the stars and that shine upon them. No robes could be fine enough for the son of such a king. But has he a crown, asked the man, for unless he has a crown, he is no king. And anyway, I know my father, he was a beggar. He begged us to buy those robes. I cannot wear them, for I am a beggar's son. And when the passerby left, the man was still sitting there in rags, like the rest of us, for stories. Well, it seems to me that all of us, have that story, that is our inner story. We already are wealthy. We are already supplied with everything needed for health and happiness and well-being for good. And when we listen to our heart, when we listen to the soul, we know that we're going in the right direction. The whole point is to listen not to what is required of your personality, not what is desired, because it will always stir, it will always steer you in the wrong direction. You will be going toward that which might fill you up, the, the extra food, the extra carbs, oh, there's so, even called comfort food. But really, what your soul is yearning for is connection 
with the divine. And just like that, these, the men in these little stories, you already have it. It's already right, right where you are. It's in you, through you, as you, and it is for you. And it is greater than you know yourself to be. It is far greater than you know yourself to be. It is the nth degree. And each one of us was equipped with everything we needed at our birth for our souls to grow, to flourish, to, to become. So today, as you're listening to your heart, as you're listening to your heart, as you are aware of that soul within you, when you're tempted, when you're tempted to be afraid, and many people are afraid of right now, in this present moment, no matter where you are, there is, no matter how you are, there is nothing to fear. Right here in this moment, there is God and only God. There is only that thing that is breathing your breath. You don't even have to do that. And it is bringing to you the yearning of your heart. Be still, listen, then, <laughs> then take action on what you've heard. What is it? What is it that your heart is speaking to you? For each of us, it will be different. Um, I've been watching, uh, I think his first name is John Kaminsky. He has a wonderful network called Some Good News. And his logo was made by his daughter. And it looks like it was made by his daughter. You'll find it on YouTube. Go ahead, find it. It's one of those things that will make your heart sing. And one of the stories he featured was this nine-year-old who really, really had her heart set on seeing the musical Hamilton. And then when this COVID-19 hit and Broadway was closed, she could no longer go. Well, it just so happened John, Kam John Kamitsky's wife was the lead of, um, not Hamilton, but was the lead in uh, Mary Poppins, the new one, not the old one. And so she came on, and so the little girl cheered up. And then Lynn McGill, uh, whoops, the star of Hamilton, Lynn Manuel. Lynn Manuel, came on and talked to her. And then as he came on, another singer came on, another singer, they sang for her the, the whole song Hamilton. All of these singers came on to this Facebook page. It was so moving to see her face just filled with happiness, filled with joy, because she was able to receive the gift, even though she wasn't able to, at that moment, go to Broadway to the musical. The universe, God, spirit, soul, always has ways always has ways for us to have our heart's desires. You've heard this often from me, so long as our heart's desires are what we really want and harm no one else, including ourselves, what we really want. Your nature is God's nature. Your nature is love. Your nature is gratitude. Your nature is peace. Your nature is joy. So when you're tempted to think along the lines of those four stories about what a poor, poor, pitiful life you're leaving, living, living, poor, pitiful life that you're living, when you're tempted to think that, reach deep within yourself for something to be grateful for. A friend that is still with us that you can call something you can be grateful for, your physical well-being, something you can be grateful for, our community, something you can be grateful for, your, your ability to imagine, to choose, 
Another possibility, if gratitude isn't what you want to do this moment, another possibility is just to bring joy into your awareness. And here's a wonderful technique to do it. Think of the word joy. Just let it flow in your mind. Joy, joy, joy. Don't say it, just think it. And look in the mirror. As you're looking, you'll see your eyes begin to light up. A smile form the corner of your, of your lips because that word wants to escape. And when it, you can't contain it anymore, and especially if you're there by yourself, but it doesn't matter, let that word come out, joy. And then let it come really out, joy, so that it's a scream of acclamation, joy. It is your birthright. It is your soul's song. Got the joy, 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 right here, right now, in our hearts. So what can we do this week? Well, for me, I'm going to go back to sheltering in place. I'm going to keep my social distance. I'm going to keep phoning my friends. I'm going to keep doing my Zoom calls and my, and my um, classes. And I'm going to practice being grateful. Grateful for the technology, even though it was, I was clumsy with it today. Grateful for our community. Grateful for the principle that is always operating. And I'm going to practice joy, 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 joy. It's a beautiful thing. And when I find myself in that poor, poor, pitiful me, I'm going to reach way down inside myself and I'm going to come up with a song on my lips and in my heart. I invite you to do the same thing. It's a wonderful life. And so it is. And now, I'm going to pray. And Diane's going to accompany me. Okay. <sighs> we just take a moment. And what I do in this moment is to deeply connect with the source of all life. That thing that is the mothership of my soul that is soul, the thing that is spirit, that is first cause to all creation, that mighty moving power that is everywhere present, is in and through and as, me in and through and as each one. And I'm going to speak this word in the first person. So I know that each of you can individualize it and apply it to your own life. I am enough. I'm made of God stuff. God within me is forever obeying my every command. So I pay attention to what I'm commanding and I put my attention on the good and very good, the happy, the healthy, the well. I put my attention on the possibilities that surround and indwell me. I put my attention on that perfect life of God that is my physical well-being. My body temple is an expression of the divine. I put my attention on the love that surrounds and indwells me. The universe as kitten rolling at my feet. The universe as beloved awakening to their own magnificence. I remind myself that not only am I the love and the health of the one, but I am the creativity. And that creativity flows through me naturally, normally, easily, effortlessly. There's always more good. And not only am I the creativity and the wholeness, I am that prosperity that is the gold on my shelves, that are the rich garments in the chest that I ignore, that are the ideas in the books that are, I'm surrounded by. I recognize and realize that it's been there all along, 
all for my accepting. And today I open my heart in a wider, greater way. I accept my good. I'm so grateful for knowing what I know. I'm grateful for the science of mind. I'm grateful for the principle that always says yes. And I'm grateful for that mothership of a soul that guides me home. I'm so grateful. I'm with my heart filled with gratitude. I simply release this word to the action and activity of divine mind. It is complete, and so it is. circulate our good and just to remind us that when we give out we have created a flow so we want to continuously be giving out whether it is our service our attention our money our love whatever it is so this is an opportunity for you to express your gratitude for this center and for our beautiful music director and the wonderful things that she's been doing for us today and for her husband who you don't see but we're very pleased that he's here as well for the gratitude for that we can continue so by all means if you're writing a check um, make it to the center for spiritual living capistano valley send it um, you can send it attention to our bookkeeper reverend karen allen or you can go to the um, website and there's a donate button right there on the first page and donate that way. We are working on, I have applied for a donate button on our Facebook page. I'm sure it will be there in the absolute perfect timing. So it's about knowing that you are in this flow and giving and receiving and being one. We are continuing so many things here at the center. So we're continuing classes. Um, Aiden has a class this afternoon that is the third in the series of the 100 classes, which is 
beginning um, science of mind, wonderful. He's having a great experience and he's doing that by Zoom. By all means, you can still join that class. Um, Re uh, Reverend Arkad is doing a meditation weekly and check into that. And then after the service today, you have an opportunity to be prayed for, just like you would if you were here, by going to Zoom. Um, I'm sure that someone is going to put that the right um, link on, 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 the, on the chat. So you can go right there, and you will have a short prayer from a practitioner. So you'll see the practitioner. Practitioner will see you, and you'll talk about your prayer request. And by the way, if you don't want to do that today, prayer is the most important tool we have. Affirmative prayer is the most important tool, and you know how much I value our meditation. So I'm saying even more than meditation is prayer. If you want prayer, please go to the website and make a prayer request. It will be distributed to all the practitioners and ministers, and our promise to you is that we pray for you daily. It is such an important thing to do and to recognize that no matter whether you're coming here in person, which you're not allowed to do yet, you are part of this community, and you're an important, treasured part of this community. And we'd love to hear from you, even if it's saying, no, I'm fine, just continued well-being. That's great. So this afternoon, I believe we have a Conscious Connections at 1.30, which we usually do. If not, again, the chat is probably telling you <laughs> what we're doing. Watch for the other things. Tomorrow, my prayer will, my final prayer will be posted, and uh, you'll receive that if you're part of our email list. And I invite you to sign up for that if you are not. We're, um, we've been blessed. We applied for and received the small business loan, and um, which, if we meet all of the, which we if we meet all of the qualifications, it will become a grant, and that will allow us to keep our musicians employed as well as others, even while we're not here. And um, I'm so very grateful for so many people who helped that happen. I think I'm at the end of the announcements. Closing song? Yeah. We're going to do a closing song. We're going to do the peace song. All right. And let's stand, if you can, if you're not physically distancing from your friends, hold their hand and sing with gusto. Here we go.